This lesson covers California 8th grade science content standards 2A, which states that students know that force has both direction and magnitude, 2B, which states that new students know when an object is subject to two or more forces at once, that the result is the cumulative effect of all the forces, and 2C, which states that students know that when forces on an object are balanced, the motion of the object does not change. The learning objectives, or things you should be able to do at the end of this lesson, are as follows. You should be able to define force, explain how forces combine, and describe how balanced and unbalanced forces affect motion. The definition of force is simple. It's simply a push or a pull on an object. There are a few types of forces. We have contact forces, which are forces that are touching. We also have non-contact forces, which are forces that are not touching. Force exists when two objects are not touching. You can kind of think about it in the way that maybe your siblings or cousins play that old trick on you. Like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. All right, that's not really a force, but there are forces that are forces that can be exerted on each other that are non-contact forces. Um, such as magnets, they exert a force on other objects without having to touch them. And there is the force of gravity, like the gravitational pull of the sun or other celestial bodies on each other without touching. Okay, when we start to talk about forces, um, forces are a type of what we call a vector. And this term vector is going to be extremely important. There are many different types of vectors, and force is the first vector that we're going to talk about. The first thing you need to know about vectors is that they have what we call magnitude and direction. So when you hear magnitude, that's going to refer to some type of number, or you might hear it called size. You might hear me say that vectors have size and direction. So for example, if I asked you what size pants you wear, you might say, a uh, size 2, a size 4, a size 6 if you're a lady. Or if I asked you what size shoe you wear, you'd say 10, 12, 6, 8. You know, you'd give me a number. So when we say vectors have magnitude and direction, we're saying they have some number associated with them and a direction. So, for example, if I said I was walking 3 miles per hour east, I've just given you my speed as a vector. I gave you the magnitude, which was three miles per hour, and the direction, which was east. Okay, vectors are often represented using arrows. Okay, and usually a larger arrow denotes a bigger vector or a bigger magnitude than a smaller arrow. Okay, so just be on the lookout for that. You should also be aware that force is measured in a unit that we call newtons. Just like we can measure weight in pounds, we can measure fluid in milliliters or liters, we can measure mass in grams, newtons is our units for measuring force. But this lesson is mostly on how these forces combine. Okay. So when more than one force acts on an object, those forces combine. And the combination of all those forces is called the net force. So here's an example. Let's say we have an object. All right. And let's say we're first going to talk about forces combining in the same direction. So let's say I had a force of 10 newtons acting on this object. And in that same direction, I also had a force of 5 newtons. When forces combine in the same direction, first of all, the net force, which is the combination of all the forces that are acting on an object, is going to be in the direction of the force. So in this case, our net force would be to the right also, and it would be 15 newtons. Because forces combining in the same direction first of all, have a net force in that same direction and is a sum 
of all the forces acting on the object. Now, if, for example, we have forces acting in opposite directions, let's say a force was acting to the right at 10 newtons, and a force was acting on this object to the left with a force of 5 newtons, when forces are acting in opposite directions, the net force is, first of all, in the direction of the larger force. In this case, the larger force is 10, and we can see that that force is moving to the right, so our net force is going to be to the right, and it's going to be the difference between the two. And the difference between 10 and 5 is going to be 5 newtons, because 10 minus 5 is 5. Okay, in this case, it's going to be, the net force is going to be in the direction of the larger force. And it's also going to be the difference between the two, so you'll have to subtract. And I'll show you a couple more examples here. All right. So... You can pause it if you need to write this down. But let's look at another example. Let's say I had an object and something was pulling it upwards with a net force or with a force of 100 newtons. And something was pulling down on it with a force of 20 newtons. In this case, we have forces acting in opposite directions. So our net force is going to, be, first of all, be up because when forces are in the opposite direction, the net force is in the direction of the larger force. And so, first of all, our net force is going to be up. And the difference between the two is going to be 100 minus 20. So our force will be 80 newtons up. Because force is a vector, it has size and direction. Our size is 80 newtons. Our direction, in this case, is up. All right, we could have denoted this as north, south, east, or west. It depends on... Um, what we're doing. And with that said, it should be noted that forces are vectors and therefore require a reference direction. So for example, if I asked you which side of the street you live on, if you said the left side, then that would not be as accurate as you could be because you don't have a frame of reference. Okay, so if you, I say you live on, it's a terrible house, but let's say you say you live on the left side of the street. Well, that's true if you're traveling this way, you live on the left side of the street. But if you are traveling this way, you, the house would be on the right side. So you need a reference direction. So if you had a reference direction, and let's say you had a map with a compass on it, then you, could, you might want to say, I live on the north side of the street. And that way you've given a reference direction. But more on that later. Let's look at another example, okay? Let's say I have an object, and it's someone's, a force is acting on it with a force of 25 newtons, all right? Somebody's pushing on this object, and let's say somebody's also pulling the object with a force of 10 newtons, okay? These forces are moving in the same direction, so therefore the net force is going to be in that same direction, and it's going to be the sum of the two. So the net force will be... 35 newtons to the right because the forces combine in the same direction, so we add it. Now, if, for example, we had an object and a force was acting on it this way with a force of 7 newtons, and there was an opposing force with a force of, let's say, 10 newtons, okay, Again, the, these are forces moving in opposite directions, so the net force is going to be in the direction of the larger force. In this case, it'd be to the right. And the net force is going to be the difference between the two. So it's going to be 10 minus 7, so it'd be 3 newtons to the right. Now, we, what happens when the net force on an object is zero? Okay, when the net force on an object is zero, so let's say someone's pushing from this way with six newtons of force, and there's also a force over here that has six newtons of force. 
our net force in this case is going to be zero newtons and therefore there will be the forces will be balanced and therefore there will be no motion okay this is zero newtons okay so if and this makes sense for example if two people were pushing on a, a dresser trying to move it and they're pushing from opposite directions with the same amount of force then it won't move in this case we have these forces are balanced okay now let's say someone is a little bit stronger okay and you're trying to move this dresser and you have someone pushing with 13 newtons of force and somebody on the other side is pushing in the opposite direction with only 10 newtons of force then these forces are going to be unbalanced we've got 13 on this side and only 10 on this side so in this case these forces are unbalanced our net force is going to be in the direction of the larger force so it's going to be to the right and if you've been paying attention you'll know that our magnitude is going to be the difference between the two so it will be three newtons okay so just be aware that if forces are balanced they will have no effect on motion if the forces are unbalanced there will be an effect on the motion. This brings us to Newton's first law, which states that if the net force on an object is zero, then the velocity of the object will have no change. Or more simply stated, an object at rest will stay at rest until an unbalanced force acts upon it. Or an object in motion will stay in motion at a constant speed and in a straight line unless an unbalanced force acts upon it. So things this is there's this idea of inertia cuz Newton's first law is often called the law of inertia and that means that objects have a resistance to the change in their motion. So objects that are sitting still want to continue to sit still and objects that are moving want to continue to move. So, for example, if you have like a ball or an object sitting on a table, and it will sit there forever as long as the forces are balanced. If an unbalanced force acts upon it, then the ball will move if it's strong enough to overcome the force of uh, static friction. But more on that later. Now, for objects that are moving, the same rule applies, and this can often be. This is best seen, like for example, in space where we have. Uh, little to no gravity and no resistance. So if an object is moving through space, it will move at a constant speed at a, in a straight line forever until a force acts upon it, until it, an asteroid hits it or the gravitational pull of some celestial body uh, alters it. But without that being the case, an object will continue to move in a straight line at a constant speed. So an object at rest will stay at rest until an unbalanced force acts upon it. Or an object in motion will continue to move in a straight line at a constant speed until an unbalanced force acts upon it. Okay, So inertia, or the force needed to move an object, is dependent on, first of all, that object's mass. So obviously it would take more force to move a really massive object like a big rock or boulder than it would to move a little pebble okay and so just keep that in mind when we think about Newton's first you should now be able to achieve our learning objectives you should be able to define force it's a push or a pull on an object you should be able to explain how forces combine when forces combine in the same direction the net force is first of all in that direction and the sum of those forces. When forces combine in opposite direction, the net force is in the direction of the larger force and it is the difference between the two forces. You should also be able to describe how balanced and unbalanced forces affect motion. If forces are balanced, there will be no effect on the motion, whether the object is moving or not. And if there is an unbalanced force, the object will have a change in motion.